Captives of a Concept, Chapter 8, entitled, Using the Bible to Keep Themselves Captive. All Jehovah's Witnesses, including the governing body, knows that the Bible is used for setting things straight, as mentioned at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. But the Proclaimer's book shows that they are unable or either unwilling to allow the Bible to set things straight for them, especially their claim of being God's organization. So we have a scripture, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. The path of the righteous one is like the bright light that is getting lighter and lighter until the day is firmly established. Being an ex-witness, and even AJW, you hear that all the time. So while Matthew chapter 24, verses 45 through 7, about the faithful and discreet slave is probably the most important scripture in Watchtower theology because of their claim to be God's organization. Proverbs 4.18 has to be the second most scripture because it's so often used as the basis of explaining away new light. So the Proclaimer's book presents their interpretation of this scripture, Proverbs 4.18, under the heading, How Jehovah Leads His People. And it says this on page 708 of the Proclaimer's book. If a person has been in a dark room for a long period of time, is it not best if he is exposed to light gradually? Jehovah has exposed his people to the light of the truth in a similar manner. He has enlightened them progressively. End of quote. Well, first off, this verse doesn't mention anything about God or how he leads his people to understanding anything. Again, Proverbs 4.18, the path of the righteous one is like the bright light that's getting lighter and lighter until the day is firmly established. So this chapter is going to help us to understand, one, their interpretation of Proverbs 4.18, and then two, to see if that is the way it works when they apply it to their teachings that have changed over time. So one teaching is the second coming of Jesus Christ. But uh, the Watchtower doesn't like to call it his second coming. They prefer to call it his invisible presence. So if Proverbs 4.18 was true, this is how uh, a graphic shows how it, things would have worked. So from C.T. Russell from 1876 to 1916 regarding Christ's second coming, it was dark. Or in other words, they don't know the date. And then J.F. Rutherford from 1917 to 1942, there was some light, but not enough to see the correct date yet. Hence, it's kind of a gray matter. And then from 1943 till today, the light of truth is fully bright and they clearly see the date 1914. The problem with this gray or black to gray to light white is that's not the way it happened the proclaimers book says that Russell first learned the date 1874 for Christ's second coming two years later in 1876 that's when he taught excuse me that's the date that he taught until he died in 1916 that Jesus Christ returned in 1874 and that's what Rutherford taught until he died in 1942 the next president of the Washtower Bible and Tract Society Nathan Knorr didn't change that date from 1874 to 1914 until the next year of his presidency in 1943 so according to this it wasn't until after Rutherford's death that the next president simply turned on the light about 1874 from off to on there was nothing gradual nothing progressive 
So, of course, if Jesus didn't return in 1914, it means Jehovah's Witnesses are still in the off position when it comes to their new light. Now, another teaching is the superior authorities that are mentioned in Romans chapter 13, verse 1. The Proclaimer's book mentions on page 147 and explains that from 1929 to 1962, the society incorrectly taught that these authorities were God and Jesus Christ, and that in 1962 it was acknowledged that the superior authorities were the secular rulers. But this is an, an example of progressive understanding. For 33 years, they taught something that was wrong that they had already had the right teaching on. That's going from on to off. That is not progressive. C.T. Russell got the teaching right, but in 29, Rutherford decided to turn the light of truth off. And then when he died, Nathan Knorr turned it back on. So there's nothing progressive. It was on, it was off. The light is on now again. So to show how far the governing body needs to push the Bible in order to force its support of this progressive light, consider what they apply to Jesus Christ himself. In the Proclaimer's book on page 709, they say that Jesus, when on earth, admitted that he did not know the day or hour that the present system of things would end. So, that's of course true. Jesus said that he didn't know when the end would come, but somehow C.T. Russell and J.F. Rutherford said that they did know, despite the fact that Jesus Christ himself said he didn't know. So the Watchtower's spiritual light switch, how does it actually work? Is it progressive like a dimmer? You know, you have a light dimmer instead of an on-off switch and you're able to adjust the lighting. Well, of course they don't have a dimmer switch. It's just simply on and off like the typical light switch. So it's not progressive and the light does not get brighter. Either the light is on or the light is off. But we also do know that Jesus' disciples, as Jehovah's Witnesses claim, were guilty of the very same thing. At Acts chapter 1 verse 6, it mentions, Lord, are you restoring the kingdom to Israel at this time? So the Watchtower uses this to show that Jesus' disciples did kind of did the same thing as Russell and Rutherford. But notice this quote from page 709 of the Proclaimer's book. Does the fact that the society has had some premature expectations mean that they are not being led by God? Not any more than the disciples' question about the imminence of the kingdom in their day mean that they were not chosen and led by God. So here they're comparing all of the society's premature expectations, false dates, and so forth, which have been published in billions of pieces of literature worldwide for over a hundred years. They compare it to this simple ten-word question that his disciples asked him in a private setting. Yeah, those are kind of the same things, I would say. Not, but to Jehovah's Witnesses, of course, they have no idea about this. So what's the similarity? Eh, there is absolutely no similarity. The Jesus disciples asked a question in private. They didn't go preaching for eight years that millions now living will never die in the destruction of Jerusalem to the Roman army in the wrong year. So, yeah, it's not the same watchtower. So in order for there to be a similarity, yeah, Jesus' disciples would have to preach a wrong date for many years, but that 
is not the case. There is no similarities. The Watchtower is just trying to get people, they're fleecing people, basically. So again, it would seem that the reason Jehovah's Witnesses can't notice this is because they need to believe what they want to believe so strongly that they won't allow themselves to notice that there aren't any similarities between these two events. So the most fundamental reason, according to the author, why Jehovah's Witnesses and their religious leaders are unable to notice these differences is because the concept that's holding them captive will not allow them to notice it. I like to call that cognitive dissonance. So in order to uphold this illusionary God's organization thing, they have to spin their history to force it to apparently agree with the way they interpret scriptures. They also have to spin the Bible, Proverbs 4.18 and Acts 1.6, to force it to explain all of Russell's and Rutherford's wrong food at the wrong time so that either one, it comes out as right food at the right time, or else two, that it doesn't matter what it, that it was wrong food at the wrong time. So the Jehovah's Witnesses are going to spin whatever they want to spin and they're going to make themselves look like they knew it all along. So this will bring an end to this chapter and I hope you stay tuned for the next episode. Thank you for taking time to watch and listen to this presentation. Post your comments, like and share this video, subscribe to my channel, and stay tuned for the next episode.